And now we invite our Facebook family into this aspect of the worship experience on our end and welcome them and let them know that we're glad to have them as we prepare now to receive the word. Uh, if you will, let us, let us pray. Father, we're grateful to you for this another magnificent day that you have given us. Pray now that you will open our hearts and minds and spirits, that we may be able to see and perceive and receive the marvelous things that you have for us right in your word. This we ask in the name of your only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ, who is our Lord. Amen. Again, we are grateful to have each of you on the Facebook or in our prayer line to participate in this worship experience. Again, we're grateful to Dr. Hart for the presentation that he's given us on our Sunday School lesson, which is always an enriching experience. And we're grateful to God for him and grateful to him for allowing God to use him in his service. And I'm grateful to each of you who are participating in this ministry of sharing and receiving the Word of God for all that we need now and will ever need is in the Word of God. And now turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles to the book of Revelation. This is the last book in the Bible. The book of Revelation, and we want to focus our attention on chapter 3 of the book of Revelation. That's Revelation chapter 3. And we want to start reading uh, in chapter 3 at verse number 1. Revelation chapter 3, verse number 1. And unto the angel of the Lord in Sardis write, These things said he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how or what thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, that have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. The grass withereth and the flower fades, but the word of God shall stand forever. Amen. From this passage of scripture, I want to use as our subject, strengthen that which remains. Strengthen that which remains. We must admit that none of us are where we should be in our relationship with God. 
And many of us have not uh, kept the same level of intensity of our relationship with God as we have moved along life's way. We have allowed the cares of this world and the deceitfulness that is all around us to eat away at our relationship with God and that causes us to spiritually die. Even though we may still look good, and that's the problem, the problem that we look good on the outside and people who do not know us uh, look at us and feel that we have it all together that everything is going well and fine in our lives. But on the inside, we know that we do not enjoy the kind of relationship with God that we have once known. And that is a problem. It's speaking to the church, but the church is made up of the people. And the church is dying because the people are dying spiritually and therefore they're not able to function as God would have them function. And that's a problem that we experience every day. We see people who claim to be children of God, but they do not give evidence by their living that they are children of God. When we see them, many times we cannot distinguish them from those who are of the world. And yet we are in the world, but not of the world. And there ought to be a clear distinction that is readily discernible between those that are children of God and those who have not yet become a member of his family through redemption. We have become weak. We're dying. We're not able to function as God would have us to function. We're not able to do what God would have us to do. We were not able to do what we once were able to do. And that's for those of us who've been on the road for a long time. For those who are young, you, you, you are not yet where God will bring you. You are not yet where you are going to be. So don't think that you have it all together now. There's really much more lessons that you will learn as we go down life's road. So for you, you're not where you ought to be. You're not where God's going to bring you. I know sometimes when you're young, you think you know it all. You have all the answers. But I want you to know there's a lot more to be learned. And you will learn it and you will move closer to where God wants you to be as you travel along this road. So for all of us, we're not where we need to be. We're not where we once were. We have uh, dropped to a lower level of living in our relationship with God. So the problem is we look good. Problem is that we sound good. We talk good. But on the inside, we are a shell of what we need to be. And being that, we're not able to stand strong when strong standing is required. We're not able to stand tall when tall standing is required. When God needs a witness, we find ourselves unable to rise to the occasion with the kind of power and vigor that's required to convince the people that there is a reality in serving the true and the living God. So in this text, like in all of the letters to the churches, we find a familiar pattern uh, emerge. First of all, there's identification. The writer identifies the authority for the message, who it is that's speaking. And then there is a commendation that's, re that's complimenting the churches for the thing that they're doing that's right. Then there's a confrontation, and that is challenging the churches by making them face that which 
uh, is not proper and acceptable in the sight of God. And there's a recommendation on what we can do to make things right. And then there is a possibility of a congratulation for those who are able to abide by the recommendation. So it's identified in this text that the, that the one who is sending the message uh, to the church is being sent by the angel. The angel is bringing it. But it is from he who hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. The stars being the messengers, the angels, uh, are the messengers for God. And uh, the, the spirits of God, there's great debate about what that means, and we won't try to explore that here at the time, but it is coming from Jesus Christ. And, um, and then so he tells us who he is. And then in this text, he goes right to the problem. He says, I know your works that you have a name, that you are alive. People think that you have it all together. People point to you and say, one of these days I want to be like that person. You have a name that you have it all together. You have a name that you're walking on the straight and narrow. You have a name that you are on the king's highway. But in reality, you're far from that on the inside. You've Worship God with your lips, but your heart is far from it. You say the right things, but you do not mean them in your heart. That's the problem. And because of that problem, you're dying. You are getting further and further from the source of life, who is God. God is life. And when we do this, we sin, and sin causes us to break our fellowship with God. And when our fellowship with God is broken, we begin to drift further and further from God it, and causing us to not be able to do and to be what God would have us to do and be. So that's the problem. That's the problem that we have. Now, now our challenge then and what we need to do in must be done is we need to take the steps necessary to fix the problem. With the problem needs to be fixed. We are dying. We are moving further and further from the source of life and not enabling us to be able to do what we need to do uh, in the service of our God. We need to fix the problem. You see, it doesn't do any good to try to live over it, try to live over the problem, try to go on and act like the problem does not exist. We need to fix the problem. If we are losing blood, you cannot act like you're not losing blood. You've got to fix the problem. If you don't fix the problem, uh, you will die. You can't start praising God while you're losing blood. You need to fix the problem. Many times you, we try to ignore the problem. We try to act like it does not exist. We try to act like uh, that we want to believe what the people are saying about us. When we know in our heart we're not where we need to be, and we know we're not what God needs to be. We need to fix the problem. You cannot ignore the problem. You cannot act like the problem does not exist. You cannot try to live over the problem for as long as the problem of being uh, separated from God or being not where God wants you to be, being drifting away from God, we will not get better. We need to face the problem. Acknowledge that, they have the, that there is a problem. Acknowledge that we are not where we need to be. And I know that's difficult for some of us. Some of us have difficulty in acknowledging that we are not where we ought to be. We have trouble act acknowledging that we are not doing what we ought to be doing. But in order to fix this problem, we've got to be willing to acknowledge that we have come short of the glory of God and that in order for us to do what needs to be done, this problem needs to be fixed. Well, the question then comes, how do you fix the problem? How do you fix it? First of all, you need to stop. Stop doing that which causes life to be drained out of you. Stop doing that which is causing you to be estranged from God. 
Stop doing that which causes you not to be where God would want you to be. Whether it is you're in a relationship that you ought not be in, you need to stop doing that kind of thing. If you are spending money on that which is not food, you need to stop doing that. Or that which does not satisfy the necessities of life, you need to stop doing those things. If you're going to places that are not pleasing in the sight of God, we need to stop going to those places. If we're doing things that are improper in God's sight, we need to stop doing it. You cannot move on with God, continue to do the things that are displeasing in God's sight. You cannot move on and strengthen what you have with God if you are not willing to do, stop doing those things which causes your strength to be drained from you. So if you want to strengthen what you have left so that you can be where God would have you to be and to do what God would have you to do, you've got to stop doing those things that's causing your strength or your life to be drained out of you. And if you stop doing that, stop doing the things that you ought not do, stop going to places that you ought not go, then you put yourself in a position to start the strengthening process. In the stopping, not only do we need to discontinue doing those things that we ought not do, or to start doing those things that we should be doing that's keeping us from being what God wants us to be, we need to repent. We need to go to God and acknowledge that we are not where we ought to be, we have we have we are not doing what we ought to be doing, and we are doing things we should not be doing. We need to acknowledge it to God as well as to ourselves. And then when you acknowledge it, acknowledge that it is wrong, that it is sinful. And then express your deep desire uh, for doing those things and be engaged in those activities, whether they're doing or not doing, those things that are pleasing in God's sight. And ha be really sorrowful for the fact that you have been engaging or not engaging in those things that you should be engaged in. So we need to stop, and repent means that we stop, that we're sorry for what we're doing. Then we need to turn from those things. We need to turn from them. We need to not try to stop doing them, still looking at them. You're backing away, looking at. You need to turn our back on those things and walk away from those things. And in our walking away from them, we are walking toward God. That's repentance. We need to not only change our direction, we need to change our mind about it and be sorrowful for it and then move away from it and move toward God. We cannot create a vacuum. Just move away from it and expect us to be all right because the devil will fill that vacuum. you got to fill it with God. you got to move toward God. So first of all, we got to stop. Second thing, we got to start. After we repent, we got to start doing those things which we know are right. And if you're a child of God and you've been exposed to the Word of God and you have the Word of God at your fingertips, we know what is right. Or we can find out what is right. The information is available now to us from so many sources on what is right and pleasing in the sight of God. And God himself will prompt you. If you have the child of his by redemption, you've got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, he will prompt you to do that which is right and to distinguish what is the difference between that which is right and that which is wrong. So we've got to stop doing that which we ought to not do. We've got to start doing those things which are right in the sight of God. We've got to start praising God with a new intensity we got to start loving God with all of our heart, our mind, and our spirits. And we got to serve God by serving our fellow man. God said, when you do right by the least of these, you've done it unto me. 
when you feed and clothe the least of these, you've done it unto me. So we serve God by serving our fellow man. And we're serving our fellow man by meeting their needs. So we start doing those things that we need to do. If we don't know what to do, consult your, your, the word of God. If you don't know what to do, consult your spiritual leader. Consult your pastor. Consult someone who is a senior saint who's been on the road for a long time. They can help direct you in the things that you need to be doing or need to quit doing in order to be pleasing in the sight of God. So we need to stop. Then we need to start doing those things. Start going back to church. And, and when I say to church, you know, you can be in church and not be at church. When you go to church, be in church. Be a part of the service. Contribute. Don't go there just to get. Bring something to the service. And the more you bring to the service, the more you will get out of the service. God will speak to those louder who come there with him on their minds. Who come there bringing their spirit, bringing love, bringing a desire to be closer to him. Bringing a desire to be useful to your fellow man. So when you come to the service, be in the service. Be a part of the service. Contribute to the service. Bring a little kindling to the fire. It doesn't hurt to bring a little fire with you so that you can praise God with a greater intensity. You can worship him in spirit and in truth. And you can feel the presence of God working in your life when you start doing that which is right. When you start coming like you ought to come, praising like you ought to praise, worshiping like you ought to worship, and serving like you ought to serve, living like you ought to live, being the kind of steward over the things God has placed in your control like you ought to be in the sight of God. There's nothing more pleasing to God than being a good steward. But he entrusts you with whatever he entrusts you with. He entrusts you with the family. He entrusts you with goods. He entrusts you with a clear mind. He entrusts you with help. Then we need to be a good steward over that which God has placed at our disposal. So in fixing the problem, we need to stop doing that which is displeasing in the sight of God. Stop doing that which is causing the life to be drained out of us. We need to stop it. You can't, you can't try to carry on while the problem is still there. You cannot uh, serve God and Satan too. You cannot serve two masters. You've got to love one or hate the other. And in this case, you've got to love God and hate everything else that will cause life to be drained from you. Then we've got to start doing. You can't sit there idle. You got to get actively involved in praising God, actively involved in doing that which is right in the sight of God. We need to start walking right. We need to start talking right. We need to start living right. We need to start serving God right. And you do that by finding out what his word says, talking to those who are on the path, been there for a long time who have been or seen many dangerous toils and snares, who have heard the breakers dashing, trying to conquer their soul, but who will, will overcome the difficulties in life. You can talk with them and they can be helpful. Many of us have been helped by the old Sunday school teachers who have been through many wars. They gave us insight into life. Some of the old deacons who have been around a while, who've seen uh, the lightning flash, who heard the thunder roll, and was not able... To conquer that soul, they can help you go to somebody who's close to God and they will be able to point you in the right direction. So by doing that, you get yourself on the right road. When you stop doing what you ought not be doing and start doing those things that you will do, you will find your strength starting to grow. You find you being able to resist some of the temptations you had difficulty resisting before. You find yourself loving those that you had difficulty loving before. 
you find yourself witnessing to those that you had difficulty witnessing before. You find yourself involved in the things of God. You find yourself being a soldier on the battlefield for God. And when more you do, the stronger you become. The stronger you become, the more you're able to resist the temptations of life. And you can do that. And when you start doing it, you start remembering the things that you have learned, the things that uh, you experienced when you first met God. You, you remember how in love you were with God. You remember how that feeling of euphoria was all over you when you first surrendered to God. Remember those things and hold on to that. The Bible says, he said in the text, he said to hold fast to that. And when you hold fast to what you've learned, you've learned that God is a burden bearer. You've learned that God is a heavy load sharer. You learn that God is a protector and a provider. You learn that God is an ever present help in the time of trouble. You learn that God will walk with you. He will never leave you or he will never forsake you. Hold on to that. When things get rough, hold on to what you have learned. Hold on to what you already know. Hold on to what you have experienced. And the tighter you hold, the stronger you will become. And the stronger you become, the more you'll be able to resist the darts of the devil. So the strengthening process comes. When we stop doing those things we ought not to be doing. And start doing those things that we know to do. And one of the best places to start and the way to start is start remembering what you used to do when you were in a hot heat relationship, white heat relationship with God, when God was always on your mind, when you could feel his presence in everything, you could see him in all walks of life, you could see him in the trees and in nature, you could feel him in the cool breeze that would blow upon your face. Go back and remember those things. He's the same God now that he was then. Hold on to that and never let it go. So that puts you on the right road. So when you stop doing what you ought not be doing and start doing those things and remembering those things that got you into the kingdom of God and those things that got you over troubled waters in time past, that puts you on the right road. So then you start... When you start doing those things, the next thing you need to do when you get on the right road is to stay on the right road. Many times we can start doing what's right, but when adversity comes, we find ourselves giving up and say it's not worth it. When we get on the right road and start doing what we ought to do in the service of our God. And we still have problems and folks still treat us me. We begin to think it's really not worth it. And we find ourselves finding it difficult to stay on the right road. But I'm telling you now, no matter what happens, which as your strength grows by doing what you ought to do, the more strength you will get to keep doing what you need to do in the face of difficulty. When trials come, You'll be like Job, say, yea, though he kills me, yea, though he destroys me, yet will I trust him. Hold on to what you know is right. Hold on. And we say in the language of our culture, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Never get <clears throat> discouraged. Hold on to your crown. Let no man take your crown. Don't let adversity and difficulty Cause you to turn your back on God. Once you hook back up with God, once you stop doing what you ought to stop doing, start doing what you ought to do. Stay on that. Continue to do it. For the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but he who holds out to the end. He who continues. He who believes in spite of the difficulties. He who keeps holding on to the hope which is that which is beyond you, even though in our present we are experiencing difficulty and chaos. Hold on to that which you know is right. Stay on the right road. Stay on the right road. No matter what people say, stay on the right road. No matter what you see other people doing, stay on the right road. 
I remember once we talked about people to all to give to the Lord through the church. And one of my brothers said, well, pastor, nobody's doing that. Well, listen, don't worry about what others are doing. You worry about what thus say the Lord. You don't know how they are faring with God. You're concerned, first of all, with your own personal relationship with God. Keep that strong. Stay on the road. Stay with God no matter what happens. Even though it may get rough sometimes. Sickness may come upon your body. Stay with God. Financial difficulties may come your way. Stay with God. Stay on that right road. Don't compromise your relationship with God for anything. Stay on the right road. When you come to a fork in the road, you don't know which way to go. If you're a child of God, you got a GPS on the inside of you called the Holy Spirit. Cry out to God. And he will point out the way in all of your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He will keep you on the right road. And the more you stay on the right road, the stronger you become. Strengthen that which remains before it dies. And many of us need to go into the strengthening business. Stop doing that stuff you ought not be doing. And, stop, and, and then when you're doing it and saying, well, people need to get used to it. People need to grow up. People need to overlook that. People need to forgive. No, you need to stop doing what you're doing that's displeasing in the sight of God. You need to start doing that which is right in God's sight. Get on the right road. You can't get to where you need to be if you're on the wrong road. You've got to get on the right road. And if you don't want to get on the right road, the Bible says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. He will point out the way that you need to go. You, he will point out. Sometimes all these paths look the same. Oh, but the end of the line is so different. Which one is the right path? In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. He'll be your GPS. He will put you on the right road that will get you to where you want to be, which is a place of pleasing, a place of acceptance in the sight of God. That's our destination. Stay on the right road. And then if you stay on that right road, sooner or later, you will begin to enjoy the fullness of life. For the voice says here that who cometh, he shall be clothed with white raiment, and he, his name will not be blot out. You, you will begin to enjoy the fullness of life. And the fullness of life comes when you can enjoy life even in the midst of that which is distasteful. You can still enjoy life though you have lost some of your reasonable portion of health and strength. You can still enjoy life when the financial resources are not what they used to be. And you can no longer do financially what you used to do, but you do what you can with what you have. You can still enjoy life. Life is not made up of the abundance of what man has. But life, joy may come with how you look at what God has given you and realize where it came from and realize he did it out of his loving kindness and tender mercy, not because you were deserving of anything. So you can fix the problem of anemia. You can fix the problem of spiritual weakness if you stop doing those things that's causing life to be drained out of you. you. You just got to quit it. And I know sometimes it's hard to quit. Like some folks say, no, they need to stop smoking or drinking. They find it hard. But with man, it is difficult. With man, it may be impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So cry out to God. God will make it possible. God can bring it to pass. Whatever you see in the Bible, it shall come to pass. That's God. God is the only one who can bring it to pass. Lean and depend on God. 
Our children sing this song in the choir, leaning, I'm leaning, I'm leaning and depending on God. If you lean and depend on God, you will find that he is a mighty good leaning post. You find that he is a burden bearer and a heavy load sharer. You find that he will never leave you nor forsake you. And you can enjoy the benefits of the fullness of life when you surrender to God. When you lean and depend on him. When you stretch your hands to him because no other help you know, no other help you want, no other help you seek. You stretch your hand to him and then lean and depend on him and he will strengthen your soul. He will give you the strength that you need to say no to temptation, to say yes to Christ. To know to those things which are of the devil and yes to those things which are of God. To sacrifice the pleasure of the moment for the joy of being in the family and full relationship with God. Oh, many of us need to acknowledge that we are not where we used to be with God. We can remember the time we had a white heat relationship with God. Like the children sang in the choir that he was all over you. He was in your feet, in your hand. He was all over you. You can remember that time, but you've lost that. But you're still here. Strengthen what it remains. And you can strengthen it by discontinuing to do those things that call life to be drained out of you. Start doing those things that are right and pleasing in God's sight by getting on the right road. And then you can stay on that right road no matter what happens to you, no matter what life throws at you. Know that God will not allow more to come on you than you're able to bear. For with every test, he'll make a way for you to escape that you can bear it. Stay on that road. And then you begin to enjoy the fullness of life that comes from a new strength. Come from your effort to strengthen that which is, which is dying. Then you can look at the devil and pay him no attention. The noise of the world will not distract you. The glitter of the present will not dim the brightness of the future. For you realize that your time here on earth is just temporary. You're not going to be here long. This is not your home. You're just passing through. And you're on your way to another place. Another place on the other side. Other side where every day is Sunday. Sabbath has no end. On the other side where there is no more pain, no more sorrow, no more temptation. That's where we're on our way. But if you strengthen what remains you can have a glimpse of that while we're here on earth. You can have joy in the midst of sadness. You can have peace in the midst of confusion. You can experience joy when everything is falling apart around you. So sisters and brothers, the church of Sardis was, the recommendation was that you strengthen that which remains. Realize that it ain't what as we say in our culture, the old gray man ain't what you used to be. You, but you can get back to that point. If you stop doing what you ain't got no business doing, start doing those things which are right in the pleasing of God by getting on the right road. And then by staying on that right road. If you stay there, you begin to strengthen. You feel your strength coming back. You can feel your vigor coming back. You can feel your love for God growing. You can feel your tolerance of evil people growing. You can even love those who despitefully use you. As long as you stay on that right road, you can experience the fullness of joy. This is God's word to God's people today. If you're not one of his family, if you're not one of him, you can correct that today by yielding to him.